over the last couple of years with my job and my family situation, I've, I've done a lot of flying. I admit I don't really like it. One of the reasons is airports kind of suck. But also the other reason is I don't really like the fact that I'm personally contributing hundreds of thousands of tons of CO2. I mean, this is not what I want to do. It's not something I set out to do. And it's that kind of feeling where you think to yourself, only if only there was a better option. Now, a lot of my flying has been domestic. It's been here in Australia. I recently flew from Newcastle to Melbourne and then to Perth and then from Perth back to Brisbane and then back to Newcastle. So I flew across the country. It's quite a long way from one side of Australia to the other side of Australia. It's more than 4,000 kilometers. And yeah, that was a, that was a trip that would be much better if it could be done in another way. Maybe one day it can. There is a high speed rail being built here in Australia. And I just saw a news article. It's in fact, a series of news articles revealing the fastest commercial passenger train in the world. It's recently done a trial run and it's about to go into use. You can actually use it in China. And I plan to do so when I go back to China in the next few months. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to all the new subscribers that have come on board over the last four weeks, about 20,000. It's great to have you. China is a huge, huge country. It's massive. Population, what, nearly 1.4 billion people. And a lot of people now, uh, rather than flying in China, they're using trains, which are cheaper. They're often actually faster because you don't need to go to the airport early and check in your stuff. Getting on a train is just so easy. Now, if this was an option here in Australia, I would be taking it. And I think this is brilliant. We are building a high-speed rail here from where I live in Newcastle to Sydney, and that's gonna save people so much time getting to work. It's gonna save them about 50% of the time it takes them to get to work. I can't wait, but that's gonna take many, many years. Apparently, it's gonna take five years to build. If, if only we had China's speed and efficiency. The newest and fastest commercial passenger train in the world is capable of doing 450 kilometers an hour. That is 280 miles per hour. That's about half the speed of a, a commercial airplane, like a 747. But considering you don't have to drive to the airport, uh, check in your bags and get there early, go through all the staff, you probably find it would be quicker in many cases to get a train than an airplane and also cheaper. Electricity in China is, well, a lot of it's still coal, but that's changing. China is installing more renewable energy than the rest of the world combined. And it is basically canceled coal power plant approvals. They have fallen by more than 90% of the past 12 months, which is great. Not great for Newcastle because we have the largest coal power port in the world, the largest deep water coal port in the world, but it's great for China's air quality. As more and more of these coal power plants go offline, they're replaced by wind, solar, and batteries. The train in China, which has just been successfully driven from Tianjin to Beijing, actually is quite remarkable. It's not only faster than the previous fastest train in the world, but it also can stop much quicker. China's most recently designed high-speed train can operate at speeds, is going to operate at speeds, it can operate at 450 kilometers an hour, but they're gonna drive it a bit conservatively at only 400 kilometers an hour. That's 248 miles an hour. The new model is significantly faster than the previous model, the CR400 Fuxing high-speed trains that are currently in service. So you can get high-speed trains right now in China. They'll do 350 kilometers an hour, but the Chinese were like, you know what? Uh, it's not good enough, Let's let's go faster. Compared to the previous model, the new model is 12% lighter, it consumes 20% less energy, and has a 20% improved braking performance. That's crazy. I mean, new model, it's about 10% faster, a little bit more than 10% faster, and it consumes 20% less energy and can brake much faster. Now, this is amazing. One of the great things we've seen with electric trains recently, battery electric trains in particular, is that they are capable now of storing energy from heat when they brake. And they can store an incredible amount of heat when they're braking. 
to the point where they can recharge batteries kind of much, much in the same way as an electric car. The CR50 project also involves technological innovation in infrastructure, including high-speed railways capable of 450 kilometers an hour, bridges and tunnels. Because obviously if you're going 400 kilometers an hour in a train, you don't want to go around a corner too quickly, or don't want to have a too sharp of a corner, otherwise the train is just going to go flying off the tracks. China claims it has built the world's largest high-speed railway network to address the people's growing demand for convenient and comfortable travel. So in China, when they have public holidays, they have a big one in February, it's chaos. The roads are insane. And I mean, you would not want to be driving, but everyone does because they don't, well, not everyone, everyone used to, but now a lot of people are catching these high-speed trains instead, which is significantly reducing transport on the roads. And it's also in more decreasing pollution from cars. The total operational length of the high-speed railway network in China has exceeded now 28,000 miles. That's 45,000 kilometers. Now imagine if the US was capable of doing this. This would transform the US in a, in a massive way. Now high-speed trains actually operate across 31 provincial level regions nationwide. And what is really cool about this is that China had a plan. And that was to link every major city in the country. In a single day, China's railway network transports more than 10 million passengers, making it the busiest rail system in the world. These bustling services demonstrate China's vitality with the railway network reaching 99% of cities across the country, each with a population of more than 200,000. And the high-speed rail network covers 96% of Chinese cities each with a population surpassing 500,000. China is saying, well, yeah, this is good. This is an improvement, but it's nowhere near enough. 10 million people using our trains every day is not what we'd planned. And I believe that they plan on building out at least double the amount of fast, high-speed rail networks that they already have. In other words, basically when you visit China, the best way to travel around the country might be to use the high-speed rail network. Now, I personally, I'm hoping to go and use it. I'm excited to do this. I think it'll be quite interesting being in a train going 450 kilometers an hour, just to see what it's like, just to get that kind of feeling of being on land and doing this. The only way you can go this fast on land in the world is in something like a Bugatti Veyron Supersport. And even then, you need a purpose-built track. You can only hit that speed for about maybe one or two seconds before you run out of fuel. The speeds of these trains are truly remarkable. And I love the fact they also run on electricity. Thanks for watching.